So this morning we gather and worship and we celebrate and savor the profound truth that Jesus, who was crucified for the sins of the world, who was crucified for Lavig's sins, is now raised from the dead never to die again. And he says that because I live, you will live also. Do you believe that? Yeah, the Jesus who's raised from the dead, victorious over all things, is raised never to die again and promises that you and I who belong to him will live forever with him in all eternity. That's what we proclaim in faith. That's what we believe. But let me, with you, explore a little logic about why it makes sense that in fact he was raised from the dead. First, the stone was rolled from the opening of the tomb. Now Jesus, we know, who appeared to the disciples after this resurrection morning, did not come through the doorway. He just came through solid mass. So was the stone rolled away from the tomb to let Jesus out? No. It was rolled from the tomb so that those who came to the tomb would be able to see in, to see that the tomb was empty. Here's another profound truth. Those who argue against the resurrection say someone stole the body. But we know that a Roman guard was posted at the door. And we know that the Jewish leaders did not want the body stolen, so they begged the Roman authorities to post the guard. And we know that the Roman authorities wouldn't want the body stolen because it would be embarrassing to them that the soldiers would be overcome and that the body would be gone. And the disciples wouldn't have stolen the body and then later died in order to profess their allegiance to Jesus. If they knew they were perpetrating a hoax and that the body was just stolen, they would not have been martyred for their faith. But in fact, everyone except John who died in exile on Patmos, every disciple died professing openly that Jesus was in fact crucified, but then raised on the third day. It makes sense. Jesus was raised from the dead. So we're here this morning to celebrate that victory. And I wonder if in an unorthodox way you can go with me here. How many of you have ever seen Robin Williams in that old movie Hook where he played Peter Pan and he taught the lost boys to crow, right? When do the roosters crow? In the morning to usher in a new day. But sometimes... Like Peter Pan with the Lost Boys, you crow because you, something good happened. You triumphed. It's been good. It's a good day. So the rooster crows to usher in a new day. Easter, the rooster crows. Colors bright and glorious, de colores, right? The colors bright and glorious usher in a new beginning. So whatever was my past yesterday that I wish had never happened, I close the gate on that day and I come with the rooster crowing to a new day. The same Peter that ran a race to the tomb, you remember, denied that he ever knew the Lord outside the courtyard when Jesus was on trial. That time the rooster crowed and Peter was caught. Sometimes the rooster crows for you and me. Sometimes the loved one turns to me and you and says, what did you do? Or sometimes a total stranger might say to you, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Or sometimes it's just the spirit of God himself that stirs in the heart, ur, 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 ur. you're wrong. You're doing wrong. And that rooster crow confronts me in my stuff. It confronts me in my wrong. It confronts me because I'm doing what I shouldn't do. And you know the irony? 
This is just like Peter. We do it multiple times. And sometimes we keep denying the denial, right? And we stay with the first roaster crow that's only pointing out our wrong, our shame. Jesus never intended that there would only be one rooster crow. He always intended that you and I would, like lost boys and girls, hear the rooster crow, not only of the dawning of a new day, but of singing the triumph that we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. So on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to be roosters with me, huh? We're going to crow for Easter's victory. One, two, three. (laughs) You know what? Long after I'm gone, you're going to remember the day we crowed on Easter morning. You want to hear the crow of the Easter for the new day. You know, I'll say that again. You want to hear the rooster crow for Easter morning for a new day. There, it came out right. (laughs) Let me tell you a story about Jill and Johnny. Dr. Mark Jersted was pastor in International Falls. It was in the mid-70s. And after he preached on Sunday morning, he would go down and join the littlest Sunday school children as they sang their songs. And he knew that Jill and Johnny really loved him. Their mother lived in a poor part of International Falls, Minnesota. Jill would push bigger boys out of the way so she could sit by Pastor Mark. Well, he saw her on Sunday morning. And a few days later, he saw her standing by her mother in the fellowship hall of the church smell of coffee in the air, people muttering quietly. There'd been a tragedy. There'd been a fire in their home. And little Johnny, one and a half years old, didn't make it. And since that tragic moment, five-year-old Jill had not spoken a word. Pastor Mark visited with the mother, visited with Jill. It was the aftermath of the funeral. They were done with the lunch. And the mother said, I've got some errands to run. Pastor, could you keep Jill with you for a while? Sure, he said. I'll take her to my house, and my daughter Rachel would love to play dolls with her at the house. I'll bring her to my house. All the way to his home, Pastor Mark chatted with Jill but tears kept rolling down her cheeks and she hung her head. They come into the house and Jill just sits as if she wants the world to stop. Pastor Mark said, do you want to play with Rachel? She shook her head. Do you want to play a game? Shook her head. Do you want to go outside? She shook her head. I'll tell you what he said. Let's play a different game. I'm going to go to the piano. You sit by me on the bench, and I'm going to play a melody, and you sing whatever you want to sing. So she sat down beside Pastor Mark, and he began to play the piano. And here's what the little five-year-old girl sang. Johnny's in the trailer. I can't get him out. He's trapped in the fire. I can't get him out. And the tears are rolling down her cheeks again. The anguish is in her voice. Johnny's in the trailer. I can't get him out. And then it was just like the fog lifted. And she said, Pastor Mark, can we sing the song we always sing in Sunday school? You know, Jesus loves me. So they sang it together. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. We celebrate the victory of Easter, 
But the human race only has two songs. One is a song of my failure. One is a song about my powerlessness. One is a song of deep grief for tragedy that might come. One is a song of regret. But the other song, the other song is the winning song. The other song is the song that transcends into eternity. That's why we're here this morning, because the one who did die on a cross is raised from the dead and says, child, I always will love you. So the love of the God who gave his son on the cross for us and raised him from the dead to give you life and live within you to flow with love to you and through you is the one that we sing to. That's Easter's victory. So it's about three decades ago now that a professor of music from Waldorf College in Forest City, Iowa, named Dr. Tim Schmidt, and his wife Joyce traveled to the country of China. He was a superb concert pianist, and he did a tour of that whole section of the world, China, Japan, other de destinations in between. And when he was on tour, by the way, his father and mother-in-law, Reverend Arnold and Joyce Hedin, also went with them. On a Sunday morning, they were in a secret church in China. And they were worshiping. They didn't understand the language, but they felt the spirit of the people who were together. And so they felt the presence of God. And while they were there, they observed that this small little choir in this small underground church were singing and it was distinctive to them that three of that small choir ensemble were women who had no sight. But there they were singing praise to God. So after the worship service, through a translator, Dr. Schmidt asked the pastor about those three ladies in the choir. Oh yes, he said. All three of them, because of persecution from the government, had their sight removed. They were blinded on purpose. But they still come to worship the Lord Jesus. And they still come to sing praise to the God who gives them life. Sometimes we sing the song of resurrection and hope in defiance of those that would want us to be silent. Sometimes we sing the song because our hearts are full and we're joyful like a rooster crowing. But sing the song of Easter. We do. We sing the song of resurrection and life. We're victorious forever in the name of Jesus.